While enjoying this presentation, please consider becoming a museum member, making a one-time donation, or a tribute gift in honor of someone important to you. Use the QR code here to do so. Thank you for your support.
they were not with their minds and you worked in my heart and in my mind and you said in your actions that they were not that you got to go out when life goes on and it's a direction to move and now this program continues to help you develop yourself and helping you find yourself and also the community of getting me the confidence and me to find myself that I wanted to continue this service so life came on back in me for almost another eight years um, after the aging the most profound part of being a part of the Dale Devers family is that it's not the one away and two gone it's you're part of a, a continuous that stuff to me is kind of like pride and focus and how it's really Wow, just incredible. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Thank you to the Vail Veterans Program, Vail Resorts, NBS, and for all of you attending tonight. Um, before I bring up our special guests, I would like to introduce someone very special. Um, he is part of the Colorado Hall of Fame, the National Ski Hall of Fame, and he's a long-standing board member of the museum. We are so grateful for Bill Jensen and his wife, Cheryl. Um, so please give a warm welcome to Bill Jensen. Thanks to all of you for coming out this afternoon to um, um, hear Greg. Um, and, but I, I want to acknowledge my wife first. So <laughs> she. Uh, 19 years ago, she had an idea, and um, I think you see the results in the video. And it's just an amazing, it's been an amazing journey and an amazing program. And I've been proud to serve on her board for almost 19 years. So, It's my oh, there we go. That's better. It's my honor to it, the echo's a little tough. It's my honor to introduce um, Greg Gaston. Um, Greg, you know, first off, I'm impressed. You know, he's a graduate of the U.S. Military Academy in West Point, New York. Um, you saw briefly in the film that uh, he played for Army in the football team there, and I've seen more than a couple plays, and he was an outstanding um, in both linebacker and defensive end um, for West Point. And, um, but he dedicated his life to leading soldiers, um, civilian employees, family members in the Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and courage. We met Greg, Cheryl and I met Greg in July of 2007. He'd been wounded just a few months before. And him and his wife and two children came out to Vail for the first summer program we ever had. And there is a story about Greg riding a horse. The ranch had made a special saddle for him.
but the courage to try. Knowing that there was a nation behind me, behind me. And it was this, it was the love of this community that really, really restored not the answers, but the, the, again the courage, the possibility of what it, what I would what I was willing to do to move forward in my life. There were many tough battles over the next 15 or so months. I'll share one that many, many or most don't know about was, you know, the, the, the loss of my legs was always very obvious. But uh, it was a few weeks after I'd been in the hospital before they realized that my right arm was broken and, and it needed, uh, I needed to, to have some plate and screws put in it to, to fix it. And unfortunately, I had some complications from that surgery. And, and ultimately, I, I actually lost the, uh, I, I had some damage to my uh, radial nerve in, in my right arm or hand and it prevented me from picking up my right wrist. And, and so, um, and because of the blast injuries, my body was produ had produced a lot of calcium and it caused my right arm to lock up. So um, functionally, I was now down to one limb. Even though my right arm and was there, um, I couldn't use it. I couldn't pick up my right wrist and my elbow had locked up um, because my body had produced too much calcium. So I was now down to one limb. And all that I could think about was, was I going to ever be able to pick up a camera? Um, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. And a lot of things that I had experienced, not knowing whether or not I was going to be able to be able to frame a photo and take a photo was, quite honestly, um, the most devastating, believe it or not. My radial nerve would begin to recover, um, and, uh, and I went through an additional three or four surgeries on my right arm. Um, they were trying to break out the, the calcium or the, uh, the bone that uh, was preventing me from um, bending my arm, and, and ultimately ended up sustaining some, uh, some ulnar nerve damage, which, which to this day um, limits the use of the fingers on my right arm and hand. But um, as many of you know, I can pick up a camera and, and, and use one effectively. So, so I was able to, 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 um, to, to cross that, uh, that, that journey. But that, my camera, my th lens, through the lens, is my way of capturing my journey. And I've been extremely blessed extremely blessed that this community has empowered me, has enabled me and my family to overcome obstacles that um, in a lot of places and a lot of families would, would be insurmountable. And so my message and my story to you all as a as a visitor to this community but one that i've adopted is just an infinite debt of gratitude for what you all have have done for so many people you know we are able um, our combat multiplier as a, as a U.S. military, look, we, we have great equipment, we have great training, we have great leaders. But understand this, is that when we don't have the backs of men and women like you, we're never going to be able to do what we do. We, we put our lives on the line 
for you, for what we stand for, and all of our imperfections. Um, we fight for that. We fight for that right to continue to, to make this a more perfect union. And so, to me, the confluence of, of the day and this weekend and all the, the, and all the history, the trials and tribulations, all are here in bail for us to kind of process, for us to understand, for us to appreciate, and for us to understand that our work is not done. It's not done for people like me. It's not done for people that look like me. But it's what inspires me every day to get up and be my best self and make the most of this life that we have because our journey and uh, she wrote a groat she she uh, and uh, she was one of our friends that uh, was able to go to, on an African safari with us a couple of months ago talked about the journey and we talk about this journey and the things that we talk, but this journey is about the people. It's about those that we touch. It's about those that we connect with. That is what resides in our hearts. That's what resides in our minds. And that's what, that's what lives on beyond our time on this earth. That's what we leave. And um, I'll end with this. You know, um, more and more as I get older and hopefully a little wiser is that our lives are, are, are not about what we accomplish, not about what we accumulate, but it's about what we leave. What we leave lasts forever. What we take, it ends when we go. And, um, and I'm proud, um, hopefully not of everything I've done, I guess, but, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be part of this community, even as a, as a part-time uh, visitor a few times a year um, but I thank you all I thank you all for your blessings and I'll open up the floor for any questions thank you yes sir down together we flew down together on the plane and I did not know your story so and I had an opportunity to speak to you so I'm not real thrilled about not knowing your story and we had an, we had a long time to wait for the plane but anyway again I'm, I, I wanted to get over here I'm just I'm grateful for your story and for your sacrifice and again for your family sacrifice because as veterans the families make the service and the sacrifice as well so thank you sir thank you sir Greg, we're so glad to have you here. I'm Pete Thompson. I'm ex-military, Army, and I've been a ski instructor here for over 20 years. And when the word gets out that Greg Gatson is on the hill, we are all, all extremely honored every day, sir. But I have one question, too. Yes, sir. Would you tell us a little bit about that first Super Bowl ring? and how that happened, because I think the little bit I've heard about the story, it's fascinating. Sure, sure, Pete. So, um, 
there's uh in 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 the in uh and there is a veil connection to that story it actually starts here in veil um I don't know which day, Cheryl, you could probably say, but toward the end of our visit, we we uh, um, we went out to this uh, ranch while Bill was making us Stetson hats. <laughs> and I was in line for, for a Stetson hat. And uh, there's this voice behind me talking to someone else, and, and I'm like, man, I recognize that voice. I recognized that voice, but I wouldn't turn around because I, not until I was sure who it was. And, and finally I figured out who it was. And so I turned around and I rolled up to this man and I said, sir, um, you don't know who I am, but the last time that we were on the same field together was 17 years ago in the Sun Bowl when Army played Alabama. Um, I wore number 98, and I know you were the head coach of Alabama. And uh, and he said, son, I remember who, I know exactly who you were, number 98, because we couldn't block you. <laughs> and so we, uh, we went on to a, a lengthy discussion for about an hour. It was quite emotional. I almost felt like it was two opponents that met on a battlefield, a different battlefield years later, and we were sharing stories. And, and the last thing, and his name was Coach Bill Curry, and the last thing that he said uh, to me was, he said, son, um, you have a lot to share with the world. Don't be afraid to share it. And that was, that was the wisdom that he left me with. Well, three weeks later, four weeks later, September, um, my college teammate and West Point classmate, Mike Sullivan, who happened to be a coach for the New York Giants, would, um, he called me up and um, the, um, it was the third week of the season, and he had actually visited me in the hospital, and he was calling me to see if I w still wanted to go to the game. I said yes, and he asked me how many tickets I needed, and I said four. And it was on a Monday before the game. And then on Tuesday, he called me back, and he said, uh, he said, Greg, um, would you be willing to talk to the team? And I was like, all right. I figured he set me up, you know. But I, I said yes. As a teammate, classmate, yeah, of course, I said yeah. I, I've never talked to any organization outside of the military at this point. And I, I said yes. I wasn't really sure what uh, I was going to talk to him about. But um, sure enough, my wife is driving me down to the team hotel on Saturday night before the game. And, and – um, uh, I got this blank three by five card, and I, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. Kind of like tonight, <laughs> no. And uh, and so I decided to really kind of share, um, really what's important, what I thought was important in life. And I maybe spoke to him for 15 or 20 minutes, and and uh, little did I realize at the time, but the coach, it was sort of, it was, it was a drop the mic moment. The coach just let the team go for the rest of the night. He'd, he canceled all them other meetings. I honestly didn't know that until two years later. But um, and they uh, the next day, instead of me sitting in the stands, uh, they actually invited me to stay on the sideline with the team. And uh, so I was like, "That's pretty cool." And and I remember going in the locker room at halftime, and the score was uh, Redskins. They were called the Redskins then, uh, fourteen. Uh, the Giants three, and I'm like, oh, there goes your career as a motivational speaker. <laughs> so um, uh, the Giants would 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 rally, and they ended up winning the game, uh, 24 to 17. And this was the first of of what would be 11 consecutive road uh, uh, victories that they would have that season. And um, and I I um, that one photo, there was a photo that was really cold. That was in Green Bay, 33 below zero. 
I'm like two days out of the hospital from another surgery I'd had, and, and uh, I stayed on the sidelines with him, and we won that game, and so we went to the Super Bowl. And, uh, and on the way back from practice, uh, the night before the, the day before the game, I asked if, um, Coach Coughlin if I could talk to the team. And he said, yep. And I was like, I was actually hoping he would say no, because now I had to figure out what I was going to say again. Um, uh, I told him this. I said, um, you know, when I first met you, I was not one of your teammates. Um, and I told him, uh, quite honest, I said, if I could be anywhere in the world right now, it would be back with my soldiers in Iraq. And I told him that I would take every single one of them with me because they had become a team. We had become a team. And, and uh, I knew we were going to be victorious tomorrow. Well, so this is, this is really cool because I'm not the only one that was on the field that day. Mike, come on, stand up. <laughs> Mike was the referee <laughs> of that Super Bowl. Yeah, you thought I was going to let you off the hook, didn't you? And, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and um, the first African-American referee for a Super Bowl. And, uh, and so, um, you know, he, he saw it was a, a competitive game. And anyway, um, you know, we, uh, we won. We beat the GOAT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, and we beat him again three years later. But um, <laughs> so anyway, um, no, nah, I just, just uh, tease him. But, um, you know, that, in my mind, started here in Vail because of a chance encounter of a of a man that I respected, um, and the words of wisdom that he imparted me on that evening, on that ranch here, in uh, here in Vail, and so um, you know my it's my a lunch of my classmates they call me Forrest Gump because it's just so sort of, you know I've been in a couple of movies I'm on a TV show that's going to air uh, yeah uh, NCIS Los Angeles. But they're canceling it after this season, so <laughs> I, they should have killed me, I guess. But um, you know, I've I, I've traveled the world and and um, surpassed any dreams that I could have ever imagined because because somebody cared about me, someone um, someone believed in me, and and that is you know that's my story. My story is that. Um, um, Blessed with parents that that pushed me and and cared for me and and passed lessons of that they had in, of of endurement and, and and accomplishment and and resiliency, um, it all came to it all came to it all came to fruition um, here for me as um, as 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 I had to push myself and. And, uh, and my family along to continue to live, um, to live our lives. That's a long answer, uh, Pete. <laughs> Greg, as a representative of this mountain and this field, our mountain, I don't have a Super Bowl ring. This is my old veil hat, and I'm honored to talk to you, sir. Right, Come feet. back and ski on our mountain anytime wow. because we are always honored. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that was a good question. So, um, 
So I'd been at Walter Reed for a week. Um, I got there on the 11th, the 18th of May, like early in the morning. Um, so what happened was uh, the blood vessels in my left leg could no longer sustain blood flow. And I, I literally was bleeding to death in the ICU. Um, the nurse pulled off her belt. They put a fill expedient tourniquet on my leg. They took me into surgery and amputated my left leg. So I'm out, and, and, and the next day, the same thing happens to my right leg. But they were, I say the doctors are one step ahead. So they actually pulled a vein from my left bicep and put in my right leg. And so they, they saved my right leg. So um, a couple things going on in my mind, like I'm really sick and tired of surgery. It was, it's like I got beat there, you know, this inch of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm 20 plus surgeries into this thing and, and um, I'm just mentally exhausted. And, and so they saved my right leg and so I'm communicating with the doctors and, and so my left leg is gone and my right leg, um, if they save it, is not going to really work. It, it's not, it's, so from about mid-thigh on down, all the muscle and flesh was all, it was all gone. It was, it was just, it would have been eye candy, you know. So I said, well, what's the, what's the value of me keeping a leg that's not going to work? And they just kind of looked at me and they didn't answer. And I'm like, let's get rid of this puppy. And so I said, so it was, that was how I came to the conclusion. A, I was really tired of surgery. But it wasn't going to, I'm like, my, my, my life's going to be better like this so with two prosthetics than, than uh, that. So, yeah. If I, if I can ask you a question. Um, I mean, you had the privilege of leading um, some very brave men. I wonder if you wouldn't share a, a story for us of kind of your, your proudest moment um, leading your troops. I'm sure there's many great stories, but I'd love to hear one. Well, um, well, what I consider my my Super Bowl as a as an Army officer was that. Um, so there's maybe two stories, but um, I'm going to tell you a, a really quick story. I got to go back to Second Lieutenant Gadsden in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Staff Sergeant Bruce True gets wounded uh, during the ground war. And um, I honestly um, didn't feel like the people I was responsible for, starting with me, we didn't do a good job of, um, of taking care of him. He survived and didn't have any significant injuries, but he could have lost a leg. And uh, kind of after that moment, th that moment was, I said, you know, I had to look myself in the mirror and I said, um, we could have lost Sergeant True and, and, and I don't ever want to let that happen again. And so I promised myself that I would never um, allow anybody that I was responsible for be in a situation where we couldn't take care of one another. So we rolled the clock forward to 2005. This was, and I'm now battalion commander. I'm responsible for 400 plus soldiers with that same level of commitment. Well, right before, about three weeks before we were going to deploy, um, the medic that was assigned to my personal security detachment, he, he, he slipped on some ice and, and he, uh, he broke his ankle and he couldn't deploy with us immediately. So we asked the Army for a replacement medic and they didn't have one for us. So my headquarters first sergeant sent, um, sent my NBC specialist my nuclear, biological, and chemical specialty unit. He sent him to a two-week emergency medical course at Kansas State University. And he would literally finish this uh, private, Eric Brown, he was 19 years old. He would finish 
this course literally days before we were going to deploy to Iraq. And they came to me with the suggestion of putting this young man in my subordinate platoon and bringing up the medic for me. And I said, no. I said, uh, I, I didn't want to disrupt any of the teamwork and preparation that had gone on. I mean, I didn't want to make two moves. It was about making, you know, the most efficient. And, and so I said, no, I'll keep him. But, but in my mind, I felt that if he was good enough for them, then he was good enough for me. So I kept him. Well, that's the young man that, uh, that saved my life the night I was wounded. I went through 129 pints of blood and died six times that night. So, um, but the Super Bowl part of it was that um, there were six battalions in my brigade. Um, we had the brigade, so the six battalions, we, we had um, about 150 that were killed in action. Um, probably 10 times that number were wounded. But uh, my battalion was the only battalion that brought everybody back alive. Yep. Yep. Cyril's got friends. He got evidence. I was, I, I, well, I, I had my first day of team. Uh, team today for this evening was the day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 there were a few of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you be racing with the MBS this week? Say again? Will you be racing with the MBS program? No, no, I don't race. I don't race. I go fast, but I don't race. <laughs> Hey, sir. Uh, right. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Atkins retired. I served alongside you in D.C. when I was General Howard's deputy SJ. Ah. And I've got kids, fourth and fifth graders, and hanging out with a lot of kids through their sports. I'm wondering, what would you tell a young person or perhaps their parents who, who were, that person might be thinking about serving in the military? Yes, so um, that's a, uh, um, you know, I, I think about our service um, like your education there's a window and a time that you can i guess you can work on your education Edu education is lifelong but your windows for for accomplishing your general education and your your and your opportunity to serve is is something that you cannot uh can't go back and get and you and i know how the military anybody here that served we know how it has impacted our lives the lifelong friendships, the discipline, um, the what what I say is it's a richness in life that you can't buy. We've seen things, we've played with toys, we're aware of capabilities that you just can't buy, and. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing. I'll tell a mother that I wouldn't change a thing. Ma'am, this the military is dangerous. I said, you see this vehicle here? I was in it. And I lived. And I'm living a great life. You can you can be in a car accident in the middle of nowhere and, and bleed out in this country. We take care of our own. And that's no guarantee that you can't pay the ultimate sacrifice but but um and so i i i share that with parents all the time i mean i don't i don't want to make it pollyannish that there's there's risk but there's also reward and it's also a richness that um i know that all of our, us veterans in here would not uh would not uh would not, we wouldn't trade for anything Yes, sir. Colonel Platt. My question was going to be before I heard your presentation was what was your largest or biggest challenge in your all your endeavors? You answered that and more. So 
my hat's off to you. I can't imagine what those challenges were. I can't. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any last questions? Tequila time. All right, Greg, thank you so, so much. Thank you again, everyone. Big round of applause for Greg.